Ah, is it time to eat already? You didn't have to bring it yourself. You could have just called me. Don't be silly. Do you want me to feed you? <laughs> Don't treat me like an invalid. I'm better than I was a year ago. Much better. Oh, I really thought I lost you back then. Yes. But now I'm almost well enough to handle the Monado again. Dumban, don't say that. The Meccan have gone now. Oh, why would you say that? I just mean I'm prepared. Sorry. Okay. More importantly, eat up before it gets cold. I made something really special today. Don't feel like you need to stay here then, Fiora. Go and make your next delivery. Huh? Well, I'm sure you'd like Shulk to try some while it's still hot. That's okay. Shulk has no sense of taste. He'll say it's delicious even if it's stone cold. <laughs> In which case, today he would actually mean it. Hmm, maybe. I'm fine, Fiora. Off you go. Okay. Dumban, thanks. Finished yet. I have to be prepared to use the Monado again. Hello, this is Mr. Bacon Bits, and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Now we're playing as Fiora. That's something. And just wow, look at how much she's improved from the original. Anyway, this is basically telling you that story quests need to be completed before proceeding with the story. Not sure why these exist, but all right. And, uh, yeah. Looking at the full map, we don't have skip travel. All right. Shulk is apparently just outside the village, like right over here. So, yeah, let's uh, head over there. Hey, Fiora! Dixon! Looks like you're in a hurry. Where are you off to? I just thought I'd take Shulk some food. I'm on my way to the lab. Shulk's not there right now. Really? I just sent him out to get some fresh air. You know where he'll have gone. Outlet Park. That's the one. Okay. Thanks, Dixon. Okay, yeah, so basically the game just ba just basically uh, said what I just explained. Anyway, <clears throat> on the way there, might as well talk about Fiora's kit. Her weapon of choice is the hunting knives, and she has... Let me just get into a battle real quick. She has... Screw Edge, which inflicts break. Power Smash, which is functionally identical to Shulk's Backslash, and Butterfly Step. It's a four-hit combo that deals massive damage. Pretty nice and useful art. She seems like kind of an attacker class. I can do it! I know I can! The Electromagnetic Tempest will swallow you! Let's go ahead and grab that. And we'll just go ahead and follow this path here and meet Shulk. Also over here is another entrance to the colony, the uh, to the commercial district. In fact, let's go ahead and get this location. 
There we go. What am I talking about? Commercial district. Residential district. I feel like I made that mistake earlier ago. It's a good thing every single one of these enemies are docile, right? The Manado. It's the only sword that's effective against the Mechon armor. They say that before time began, it was wielded by the Bionis. The same Bionis that we all live on. It must have a secret. That's how Dunban was able to destroy so many Mekon. And why he lost the use of his right arm. If I can just unlock the secret of its power. Shulk! Fiora! Mm. This is great. It tastes so good. Really? It's amazing. Oh, Shulk. You say that every day. Not quite. Mm. It's always delicious. But today, it's amazing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. I used some special herbs and spices today. So if you said it was just the same as usual, I'd know for sure you had no sense of taste. What? Oh, nothing. Oh, the breeze feels so good. Yeah. I'd forgotten what it feels like. I never thought it could be so quiet here. You're spending too much time with Ryan. You're getting used to all the noise he makes. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so peaceful. You know, Shulk, I hope every day can be like this always. Huh? <gasps> the debris siren. Strange. There hasn't been much falling lately. <sighs> there might be more on the way. The anti-air batteries can't protect us out here. Let's get back to the lab. Okay. Well, Fiora, this is a JRPG. Of course, things aren't going to be all sunshine and nice weather. It's just a question of when the peace will end. Since we're heading back with Shulk in tow, uh, there's something else the game brings up. Timed button presses. Yeah, timed B button presses that pop up occasionally to encourage or help party members. Doing that to lift their spirits or help them from daze, topple, and other status ailments increases affinity between the two party members involved. If the button is timed right when the outer circle touches the prompt, you get more affinity for a perfect timing. It's a bit tough to pull off. This also goes into a tension system. Tension affects how well your party does in battle, and it's shown by the character's portrait. If it looks like the character is yelling with fire in the background, they have very high tension. But if their portrait has them hanging their head with a purplish color behind them, they have very low tension. What exactly are the things affected by tension? Well, here's a list. Critical heal rate, in case you're wondering, is something only affected by tension and cannot be improved by anything else. If a critical heal occurs, it'll heal 25% more HP than normal. Also, as mentioned, if a party member has low tension, you can always get next to them and press B to encourage them, setting them back to normal tension and increasing affinity between the two of you. 
Affinity is... well, it's also a part of Heart to Hearts. Those are special conversations between certain party members that further increase affinity. Or decrease it, depending on your choice. I actually passed one right by passed one by right where that cutscene was, and it's for Fiora and Shulk at Yellow Affinity. I recommend saving before each one if you prefer going through them blind and want the best options, but if you want to see all heart to hearts and their options, there's a separate video series for those. Finally, you can choose the party leader on your own. Just press X, then go to the party menu, select a party member, and move them to the number one spot to play as them. In fact, I want to get into something about equipment. Something I'm sure you're curious about is that armor that characters have on are actually reflected on their character models. And this version introduces a new cosmetic gear system where, as long as you have collected a new piece of armor before, you can freely switch to it in case you liked its look, and it's completely separate from actually equipping it. So as an example, you can wear endgame armor, but appear as if you're not wearing anything, which is the Ekru type armor. Ekru type. It's like so. Uh <clears throat> let's just forget I ever did that and just head back to the lab. Rhine? Rhine! What are you doing? Sh sh shulk! Uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just... Brian! Goodness. Ooh. Fiora, are you okay? Uh, I'm fine. Ah, uh, it's broken. What? What do you mean it's broken? Don't you care about me? I could have died! You're not hurt, are you? The Monado can't cut people. More importantly, what were you thinking, Ryan? Sorry, I, I came to ask a favor, but you weren't here. And I saw the Monado and... I know I'm here a lot, but even I need fresh air sometimes. Is your body still feeling numb? We have to be very careful with the Monado. It's not a toy. I know, man. I just wanted to touch it. Didn't know it would do that. Sorry. But is it true... the Monado really can't cut people? The pattern in that circle. Or maybe it's a symbol. I think it shows which power the Monado has at the moment. You think it's... a symbol? Well, if I can find a way to increase the number of symbols, I should. I'm sure that's all very clever. But why were you more worried about a machine than me, Shulk? Well, I just... I just explained why. That's not the point! Uh, s sorry. Look at you, worthless without the Monado. Until I've scrapped each and every one of you! So, of course I want to get my revenge! Your blade, it did not cut deep enough. No! Shulk! Shulk! What on Bionis happened there? Ryan. Fiora. Are you okay? Does it hurt? No. Ryan, when you held the Monado, did you see anything? You know, like a blue blade made of light came out. Same as just now. I don't mean that. A feeling like time had stopped, and then... Time had stopped. So, 
Was it only me who saw that? That sounds strange. Is it another Monado thing? Who knows? Anyway, no matter how good a sword it is, that's what happens when you hold it. Looks like Dunban really is the only one who can use it. I won't let my brother use it ever again. Not after what it did to him. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean it like that. Anyway, the point is I'm fine. To be honest, this has happened a few times before. I've been researching the Monado for a long time. Shulk, don't act as if this is nothing. Look, don't worry about it. Anyway, Ryan, what did you want to ask me about? Oh, yeah, uh, old Square Tash has gone and put me on punishment duty. Fancy tagging along? Punishment? The Colonel was pretty angry today. Did he hit you? Well, whether he hit me is neither here nor there, really. Although, actually, he did end up hitting me. And that ain't all. He made me do a thousand squats and sit-ups. Whoa, nasty. Yeah, and now I have to go all the way to the Magmel ruins and back. So you have to go and collect the ether cylinders? That's the one. They're used to power the mobile artillery. Looks like the damage has been repaired. They can't move without the ether energy. And it seems like the fueling station's all out of stock. Is the mobile artillery that big machine that crashed in the residential district? Yeah, probably. You know your way around there, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll go with you. Yeah, knew you would. Hold on. The Magmel ruins are in Tefra Cave, right? I heard that there's a male lizard nest there. I couldn't take it if anything happened to Shulk. He's delicate. Not like you, Ryan. What are you on about? I'll be fine. I can take care of myself. But... Okay, I got it. I'll make you a promise. Shulk won't even get a scratch. A promise doesn't mean much coming from you. <laughs> she don't trust me at all. Nah, she doesn't mean it. Well, Fiora is out of the picture for now. Ryan's back in the party. Even more tutorials. This will show that you can level up arts and learn skills for each character. Let me get to the screens for those. For arts, you can see that the ape. Yeah, you can set your arts right here. We only have three for Shulk right now, so that's not too big of a deal. But for leveling up, uh, you can see that AP is used to upgrade arts, which increases their effectiveness. AP is gained from battles and discovering locations. Arts can be leveled up to 10, but characters need to find art manuals that let them actually get up to that level, as you can tell by the different tiers and most of the levels being blacked out. Each character also has their own AP pool, so you don't have to worry about sharing it amongst the party. It's pretty great. As for the skill trees, each party member has three different skill trees to go down and focus on. SP is also gained from battles and finding landmarks, and is automatically put towards advancing these skill trees. Once one is full, you can actually focus on another skill tree if you want to get more skills, though you can freely switch between them at any time. The skills are actually permanent effects. While keeping a certain tree highlighted gives out a specific boost. You can see from this, like for Shulk, his humanity tree, when highlighted improves ether. Integrity improves block, and Intuition improves agility. The icon on each skill also shows what type they are. Blue is, also act Blue is always active, while Orange is only active when that character is in the active party. If there's one person on there, like this uh, medium equipment thing right here, it just affects the, the character. Three people means it affects the active party, while all affects the entire party. This is also where affinity coins come into play, which essentially means that you can share skills with other party members as long as the slots match the shape and you have enough coins to make it happen. Can't do any links right now and I can't actually show it off, so let's just move on. Ah, 
I don't believe I've forgotten anything. Yeah, this is quite a lot to take in for the first chapter. If you need a refresher, keep in mind there's a tutorial section for review. As I said before, there's even some tutorials that get added in that haven't popped up on screen, but I'm fairly sure I'm covering all that's required so far. Let's head up to Teffer Cave this time. I'm going to get Ryan in the lead. Actually, no. Here we go. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and skip travel over here. Save me some time. Ryan's weapon of choice is an interesting little mishmash of shield gun lance, and his talent art is Mad Taunt, which strictly increases aggro onto himself. As mentioned before, his role in battle is a tank, which distracts enemies away from the other more fragile party members. I'll meet you over at the cave, you can see where I'm going. It's just a simple single path to the cave. You can get a larger view of the mini-map by clicking in the left stick, as so. You can see our destination over at the flag there, that's where we're headed. Here we are at Tefra Cave. You forgot something! You will be needing the transport cases, right? Fiora! <gasps> ah! I'm coming along as well. I'd feel better going with you boys than sitting at home worrying about you. So, let's get moving. <sighs> I knew she didn't trust me. Looks like it. And there we are, we have a full team. And now we have a party gauge. It increases when bonus effects or critical hits are landed. Party gauge is used to revive incapacitated party members. One bar of the gauge allows one revive. A full gauge allows you to do a chain attack. Make sure the triangle of blue lines connects all three party members. Then highlight the talent art and press up or down to select chain attack. I'll explain chain attacks more later on, but for the party gauge, it can carry over between battles, but decreases over time when not in battle. So there you go. Now, right now might be a good time to go do some quests and defeat monsters until you're around level 8 or 10, along with a bit better equipment. That'll help you for the short road ahead. Um... Before I end off this part, I want to show off a couple of things real quick. Um, affinity chart, yes. The, uh, gifting system that I was talking about. Let's, uh, have Shulk gift Rhine something. As you can see here, you're given a list of collectible items. And, uh, this, uh, actually fills out, like, who... Who likes... Who likes or dislikes uh, certain items, and how much. Excuse me there. Ryan likes the giant hornet, but dislikes the Don Hydrangea. And this is permanently recorded for each character. So that's pretty cool to keep in mind. And uh, since I talked about equipment, let's go over to the shop real quick. Um. Yeah, there are three types of equipment. There is normal equipment, slotted equipment that has an S with them, and unique equipment. Those are kind of reddish with a U. Slots are for gems that you can equip that you equip to improve the equipment, while unique equipment have gems already in them and cannot be removed. There's also different weights for armors. The heavier the armor, the more the character's agility is negatively affected. I'll go ahead and briefly go into what the shop contains. And I will show what each, uh, which, what each item looks like, too. 
So for weapons, we have the Acrylic Driver, the Iron Pike, and the Rusty Garter, all for Rhyn. The differences for these is that the Rusty Garter boosts physical and ether defense, with a small boost to block rate at the expense of power. The Iron Pike is pure attack, and the Acrylic Driver is a mixed balance. There's also Defense Knives, which are for Fiora. It has one slot and is a straight upgrade from what she started with, aside from, uh, no crit rate. Next is Head Armor. We have Nine Cap, Battle Gear, and Prototype Helm, one of each weight. The Heavy Armor is something you likely won't be able to wear at the moment, so I can't show it. There's also Prodigal Helm, Invidious Helm, and Imperial Helm. All the same design, but different colors, though the Imperial Helm has the best stats at the cost of being the heaviest. For Torso Armor, wow this is a lot, we have Nine Top with one slot, Parlor Jacket, Battle Armor, Regnus Armor, and a unique slot Bikini Top for Fiora, because of course. The unique stat is HP up 2. Again, there's also the Prodigal Cuirass, Invidious Cuirass, and Imperial Cuirass. I hope I'm saying that right. For Arm Armor, there's Nine Cuffs, Battle Gauntlets, and a Single Slot Protector Amulet, along with the Prodigal, Invidious, and Imperial Gauntlets. For Leg Armor, there's Single Slot Nine Bottoms, Single Slot Stylish Belt, Battle Leggings, Regnus Leggings, Unique Slot Bikini Bottoms for Fiora, HP 2 up again, and the Prodigal, Invidious, and Imperial Girdles. Finally, Foot Armor. There's Nine Shoes, Battle Boots, and Prototype Greaves, again one of each weight. Topping off the inventory with Prodigal, Greaves, Invidious Greaves, and Imperial Greaves. These new sets exclusive to this version seem to largely be better, but again, you're risking agility to wear these since they're medium weight armor compared to your lightweight stuff. If you're... If you're wearing heavy armor, you need to focus on your defense. That's all I have to say. Finally, Arts Manuals. All of these are intermediate. In fact, all Arts Manuals that you can buy from shops are intermediate level. And these will unlock a few more levels of each art listed. For Shulk, we have Slit Edge and Backslash. For Rhine, we have Bone Upper, Hammer Beat, and Wild Down. Once you collect an arts manual, let's let's go ahead and buy a few. Again, you only need one of these, keep in mind. Even though you can buy multiple, you only need one. So yeah, once you have an arts manual, simply go to the arts page from the X button, and they will automatically be used. Like so. The game will tell you if the manual has been learned yet at a glance to prevent unnecessary purchases. Which, going back into the shop, you can see Learnt and Learnt, and there's also a star next to them, so great way to keep track of them. So with all of that said, um, we will be heading to Tefra Cave in the next part. I will be... I will be at a higher level and better equipped for the road ahead by then, so that's a unique animation. And I will catch you in the next video. See you then!